Welcome to another edition of Spotlight. We are at Graydon Elementary with Principal Dr. Luann Halverstadt. Luann, we're going to learn about a new science resource called STEM Scopes. Tell us a little bit more about that and what we're going to learn. Last year we had two teachers, Mrs. Ecton, our fifth grade teacher, and Mrs. Tison, our first grade teacher, that were part of the year one implementation. So they were part of the curriculum writing team and they were also part of the team that chose the STEM Scopes resource. And so last year they tried it out in their classrooms as well as their team and then were part of the training for teachers and then this year they're also um, training teachers on the different components. So you're going to um, hear from Mrs. Ecton and Mrs. Tison about that process and then you're also going to visit a kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth grade classroom so that you can see what STEM scope looks like in those particular grade spans. Well let's take a closer look at how students of all ages are actively learning in science class as we spotlight Graydon Elementary. looked at three different resources very deeply um, two years ago and we tried one unit from each of those resources and then we came together as a team, the science curriculum team, and we were sold on STEM scopes right away. It was engaging, um, the kids loved it, there was a lot of um, reflection and really scientific thinking on their part. All the scopes are wrapped around three main areas of science. So we have physical science, life science, and earth and space science. We were taking um, rusty nails and we're seeing what we could do um, to make them um, look like they were new with vinegar, water, um, a toothbrush, and a paper towel. We are trying to see if um, we could, um, if it was a chemical change or a physical change. The plant needed shade, so it wanted us to make like something so that it had shade, water. For the water of the plant, we're making like a little slide with clay and making a hole in the top so that like it can, like the water can come through. The students are going to work through five different E's. The E's stand for engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. Um, so within all of those, your students are going to be working hands-on. It's going to be inquiry-based. We are working on, we're building two ramps and then we're going to have two little toy cars colliding and record the transfer of energy on paper. How can we get the kids to learn through doing? And so the way that the, the um, STEM scopes is laid out is that we kind of access their knowledge first. We give them activities where they're learning through their experience. And that was what Park Hill was looking for. And Next Generation Science Standards also says that students need to be able to be assessed with hands-on activity, not just paper and pencil type of assessments. And the resources that we have in the assessment bank um, fit that need perfectly. I'm hoping to learn that um, how, why the energy transfers, why does it um, kind of transfer after it collides with the other toy car. And that we're, we're also learning forms of energy like electric energy, sound energy, light energy. Your students will also bring up how they have this science journal, their notebook, and they should be really proud of this because in every step of the five E's, the students are working with that journal, whether it's collecting data from the science experiment they're doing, whether it's going back through the journal and evaluating the results so that they can then form their claimed evidence reasoning. And then we're going to write a CER, which is a claim, and then we have evidence that supports our claim then we have reasoning that supports the evidence. And um, so we're going to record that, and then we, uh, after we conduct the experiment. I like how we have to like write about it more and um, how we get to describe it instead of just doing like an experiment and then just seeing what happens. And those light bulbs are going off for themselves. It's not me giving them the, the information. They're not just taking it in, they're exploring on their own, which I think fully prepares a student for the 21st century. When they're engaged, they're learning. When they're reading, they're learning, but when they're engaged and, and it's hands-on, that learning is really embedded in them. And, it, and the way that the scopes are laid out, they build upon one another. So they're just continually revisiting and rebuilding on that information they learn. I like the, I like experiments and 
really fun.